Welcome, everyone. I'm Spiro. Thanks for tuning in. As tyranny continues to march forward, so does the censorship. Now, we have seen many people's entire YouTube channels deleted. Uh, Alex Jones, David Icke, even my own previous channel, and many, many others have been completely wiped out and removed from the YouTube platform. And now YouTube just deleted Dan Dick's entire Press for Truth YouTube channel. And joining me today uh, to get the word out about this is Dan Dix from Press for Truth himself. Dan, thanks so much for taking the time to be my guest today. Hey, it's my pleasure, man. Thanks for having me on uh, today. Well, uh, anyone familiar with YouTube knows that they have a process in place uh, for how they terminate and deal with accounts. And it's like a three strikes and you're out type of a format. And, you know, first of all, I'd like to say that I'm uh, very saddened and, and frustrated by seeing the termination of your account. And I wanted to ha have you walk us through what exactly took place. Well, I mean, I, I, I got no notification, no email even. I, I woke up one morning and I checked the first thing that I often check, which is my YouTube videos. How's the video doing that I posted yesterday? And it was saying authentication error. I was like, well, that's weird. I've never seen that message before. And then my wife is there beside me checking out her phone saying, I'm not getting any of your videos. And I start seeing the messages come in. Dan, I'm not getting your videos. Your channel's being deleted. So that's when I, uh, I, it dawned on me at what had happened. Uh, in the blink of an eye, we're talking about 14 years worth of work. We're talking about five documentary films, including this one right here, Into the Fire, uh, 270,000 subscribers, over 35 million video views just disappeared in the blink of an eye. And it, it, it didn't come as a complete surprise and shock. I mean, I, I've, I've seen this coming for a while and I've been kind of hedging myself against this censorship that we're now seeing. But it's still a pretty big uh, 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 blow in this information war, if you will. I feel like I've had a limb taken off here. But it, it came as, as, as a bit of a shock, I must say, because of the, the nature that I had zero strikes, no community guideline strikes, no copyright strikes, um, no warnings of, of any kind, and still to this date, no email. Um, so I have put in an appeal, but it's not likely they're going to want to give me a voice on their platform anymore. Now, Dan, you did reach out to, uh, to basically, which is the equivalent of YouTube support. It's at uh, Team YouTube on Twitter, and you did get a response back from that. Can you tell us a little bit about that exchange that took place? Sure, yeah. Um, when I first uh, put the word out about what happened to me on, on, on Twitter, I tagged Team YouTube, and uh, they responded by saying, if your account was suspended due to a community guideline strike, you can appeal that decision here. And I had to address that right away and said, well, okay, well, first of all, my account is not suspended. Uh, my account says permanently disabled. And it's not a community guidelines issue because I had zero community guidelines strikes and zero copyright strikes. Um, and, and we had a little bit of an exchange since. I, I actually spoke with them more today because I was having issues with filling out the actual form because it's asking me for my uh, suspended URL and when I put it in, it wouldn't recognize it. And then I figured because, well, I'm, it's disabled, not suspended. Anyways, we figured that one out eventually. So at this stage in the game, it's kind of in their hands right now. Uh, I've submitted the appeal, and uh, it's just a matter of waiting to see what they're going to decide on the fate of the Press for Truth channel. Now, I do encourage uh, those of you out there who do have Twitter accounts, and when you see this type of stuff going on, and when you see independent journalists or content creators who have been you know, deplatformed, essentially taken down and banned, to go and show your support and retweet these tweets. I, I was retweeting yours as well. And, um, and if you, Dan, if you think it will still help, you know, please encourage others to do so, um, where you did tag at Team YouTube, because believe it or not, I have seen this work in the past where mm -hmm. they are more likely to respond and even restore accounts or videos, especially if it gets a lot of attention because it's, you know, out there for the public to see and it does apply some degree of pressure on there. But Dan, uh, in addition to that, do you plan to create another YouTube channel if this one is not restored? And where else can people go to find your work and to support your work? Well, where else to go is the most important thing, and we'll get into that. But I, I, something very strange happened yesterday in the midst of this YouTube termination deletion. I, uh, I, I was locked out of my account. If I try to sign in on YouTube, it just won't give me the option. It just says, you've been disabled. Um, I went to ch check it out on my phone app, the YouTube app on my phone, 
and I went to the settings and it said switch account and I was able to do that. And an account popped up that I had created a long time ago. I've never ever used it. Um, and so I clicked on it and lo and behold, miraculously, I'm somehow logged into this other account I created with the same email on my phone. I can't get access to it on a, on a computer if I try to log in, but maybe a glitch in the matrix have, has allowed me to keep one channel on my phone. So I tested uploading it to it yeah, yesterday and uh, sure enough, it worked uh, if I do it from my phone. And the channel is called Dan Dix. It literally has one video and probably three subscribers right now. Um, and I, I have no intention of really building that channel. Um, I, I just thought it was funny that I had the ability to still put videos out there. Um, so I'm going to do so. But my focus now uh, is really to build up these other platforms that are uh, uh, censorship resistant. They're, they're decentralized. They're in favor of free speech. And I have been kind of uh, spreading out my, my eggs in many baskets, so to speak, diversifying my video sharing Port, uh, platform portfolio into things like BitChute, bitshoot.com slash press for truth, minds.com slash press for truth, float.apps slash dandix pft, uh, library, lbry.tv slash at press for truth. Um, there's a number of them, DTube, Steam it, Hive. I've been getting into a whole bunch of these, again, as a hedge against the coming censorship that I saw was coming. And sure enough, yesterday they decided the pull the plug. They, they flip the switch. And so now my focus is on all these other platforms. So if you're not following me on those, be sure to follow me on a bit shoot and library and float in particular, because it looks like my days are, are, are done here on, on this particular platform. But maybe, you know what, it, it could be a blessing in disguise, to be honest. I mean, when I was demonetized by Google over a year and a half ago, I, I thought that was a, a pretty bad hit, but it turned out to be a blessing in disguise because screw Google money anyways. I ended up uh, getting more support directly from the viewers than I ever did from YouTube. So it worked itself out in that way. And now I'm completely beholden to the viewer. It's a one-on-one -on -one viewer creator, a viewer creator a relationship without Google or YouTube money playing into the factor. So honestly, I'm kind of looking on the bright side here. I'm looking at this as a blessing in disguise that, that, that I'm getting out at a good time, that YouTube is currently shooting itself in the, in the foot. They're, they're be, being the, the cause of their own demise. So I may be getting out at a good time here, and hopefully one of these other uh, platforms that I've, I've, uh, uh, I've kind of gotten in on the ground room floor on really takes off and becomes the next one that everybody goes to. And it could literally happen that fast, as we just witnessed with your entire channel, like you said, with no strikes, no warnings, no community guidelines violations. And this is what I've been stressing to uh, the people who like to come here and watch these videos on this channel as well as, hey, I've been telling them for months, you never know how long this channel is going to be around. So please do get out there and, and start to get familiarized with these other channels out there because you might come to this channel one day and it'll be gone as well. But Dan, I, I wanted to ask you, you know, I know this is speculation, but why do you think YouTube all of a sudden deleted your channel? Like they didn't follow the protocols. Uh, could this be a mistake? And uh, what was your last report that you published on your channel? Do you think that that may have had anything to do with the sudden termination of your channel? Well, there's a lot of things going through my mind, making me wonder what the heck this is all about. Um, I've had a crazy 2020. I've been uh, attacked uh, by by vicious mobs, I've been assaulted and arrested. They they had a smear campaign against me in the media. They they financially attacked me by taking down my my GoFundMe campaigns and things of that nature. So it's all been kind of uh, uh, coming down on me this year. Um, so it, it's tough to say what one thing may have been the the you know the trigger for for YouTube to do this. But the last video I posted, and I will say this. Before YouTube started deleting videos during the uh, post-COVID-1984 era, uh, I didn't really have videos deleted. The only time I did was about a year and a half ago, and it was a video titled, Pedosexuals Exposed, Children Are Being Sexualized at an Extremely Young Age. And it was a really good expose about what's going on with these uh, child drag queens and stuff. And YouTube decided to delete that one, and uh, I knew something was strange then. And then the very last video that I made before being deleted 
was a video exposing a global child sex trafficking ring. In that video, I talked about the Wayfair PSYOP. I talked about the Pizzagate PSYOP, the, the truths and the falses. You know, I, I kind of cleared the muddy waters there. And I talked about those things and I explained there is a re very real serious child sex trafficking ring involving highly powerful and famous and influential people. Um, that is very real. And then within hours, literally not even a day later, my entire channel is completely eviscerated, completely obliterated, disappeared, terminated, memory hold. Um, so it certainly does make you wonder. So I, I think that may have been the cause. Um, or it could have been a, a collection of, of this uh, a cancel culture kind of mass flagging campaign that people may have had against me to try to silence me. Um, so it's either the powers that ought not to be simply not agreeing with the things that I'm saying, going against the status quo, or I'd say it's some sort of a smear campaign, a, 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 a flagging campaign to take my channel down. And there's a third, less likely possibility. But on the morning that I was terminated, I got an email from YouTube, the, the last communication I've gotten from them, saying, you've gotten a content ID claim. Uh, for a video I did over 10 years ago, by the way, and it said, don't worry, this doesn't affect your account status. You do not get any kind of copyright strikes, nothing to fear. We're just going to put some ads on the video. That's what I got yesterday morning. And around the same time that I got that, all of a sudden, the channel was deleted. So it is possible on a, on a third option that perhaps after, because I've gotten a couple of those this year from videos that are very old, almost a decade old. Perhaps the algorithms, the, the AI trained algorithms were triggered to shut down a channel automatically after so many community guideline violations on copyrighted music or something. But the point is, I've never gotten a warning about it. In fact, the only few times it's happened this year, they say, don't worry, this doesn't affect your account. You're not getting a strike. We're just going to put some ads on the video. And th that was that. So that's, that's a possibility that it was, you know, just AI bots that took it down. And that may be worked out in the appeal or it's this campaign to have me snuffed out, or it's literally the powers that ought not to be who had me silenced. I mean, I confronted Eric Schmidt at Bilderberg, the former CEO and, and head of Google, about silencing conservative voices in particular from this particular platform. Five days after I did that, my channel was completely demonetized. One year after it's demonetized and putting out a few more hard hitting videos, it gets completely terminated. Um, so. I, you know, it's tough to say, but I think all three of those things may be, uh, may be the cause of this. Well, Dan, uh, you have done some amazing work over the years, a top-notch journalist who has not been afraid to go to, uh, go to where the story takes you, even out onto the streets, uh, which you did recently uh, in Canada, and you were surrounded and attacked, essentially, uh, by a mob there uh, at a protest, and you were, were the one that got arrested. Uh, mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit more about that and what happened with that? Yeah, that was wild, man. Uh, just for context, uh, a week before that happened, I went to a Black Lives Matter rally um, to promote the, the, the event, to, to give them a voice. I have a channel with over a quarter million uh, subscribers. I'm not, um, I'm not a supporter of Black Lives Matter per se, but I wanted to provide my channel to, to give them a voice to what they have to say. Out of nowhere at, at that rally, one lone individual, all dressed in black and masked up, started pointing at me and saying, he's a bad man, surround this guy, block him. All of a sudden, group mentality kicked in and about a dozen people surrounded me and started kind of forcing me to get out of there. The police ended up coming in and escorting me away from there. Otherwise, they said there was probably, you know, I was going to get hurt. And, and that was that. So that was crazy. Uh, they were accusing me of being a white supremacist and a Nazi. And I would often tell them, like, give me one example, one, one example of anything you've ever seen me say or anything I've ever done that would make you think that. And nobody had anything. Fast forward a week later, another Black Lives Matter rally was coming to Vancouver. This one was going to be much, much bigger. And these are the types of events that I've been covering for well over a decade. So of course, I'm going to go. I'm not going to let that little tiny crowd intimidate me. So I went. I did a three hour live stream um, where uh, you can see I'm, I'm interviewing people, I'm filming some of the speeches, I'm walking around getting a general vibe for the day, when all of a sudden somebody again singled me out 
and they said, hey, aren't you that guy from last week? And one girl pulled up a picture of me on her phone and she said, isn't that you? And said, yeah, that's me. That's when I was surrounded by a mob of crazy Antifa leftist feminists and stuff who were calling me a racist. Yeah, that's me. And she said, well, apparently, apparently you're a known white supremacist. I said, well, apparently you're wrong. And it began to escalate there. And before I knew it, I was surrounded by a dozen people, 30 people, 50 people, all of a sudden, 75, 100 people. That's when about a dozen police officers had to intervene, form a circle of protection around me and started uh, uh, escorting me out to the outer limits. Well, that only uh, caused the mob to want to follow and start shouting things like, why are you protecting a known racist and white supremacist? None of these people know who I am at all. Uh, the officers dragged me over to, to a, a park, essentially, which draw a crowd of a couple hundred people. That's when the police officers knew they had a, a big problem here. They, they have a mad mob that is trying to attack me, and they have me who they feel they need to protect. Well, all of a sudden, I was assaulted. I was, uh, had a bottle thrown at my head from the left, and uh, simultaneously from the right, they stole my GoPro and knocked my phone uh, out of my hand, tried to get that too. I managed to pick up the phone, and that's when the police officers grabbed me, forcefully whisked me over to their police vans, demanded I stop filming, and I said, well, I was just physically assaulted, and I'm on public space, so no, I'm not going to stop. That's when they physically and forcefully arrested me and threw me in a paddy wagon and had me arrested and initially charged with uh, breaching the peace and assault. Now, the crazy thing about this one is I feel the police in that instance were trying to kill two birds with one stone. They had a violent, angry mob that they had to deal with and they had somebody here who's being attacked. They don't know why, but they don't want me to get hurt. So they have to feel they need to keep me safe. So in killing two birds with one stone, in arresting me in the violent and aggressive way they did, they pleased the mob because they cheered, but they also got me out of harm's way and got me to safety, so to speak. But this happened at my expense because in the minds of the masses of, of the mob there, they feel justified. They feel this guy must be this white supremacist if the police are arresting him in this violent way and throwing him away like we asked them to. And in fact, the police gave a statement to CTV News in Vancouver who published uh, uh, their statement saying that uh, the people who were arrested, myself, were the instigators. So they've actually painted the picture that the mob is correct. We must be this thing we are accused of being. It's absolute nonsense. To this day, I've still put out the challenge Show me anything I've ever said or did that would make you think I'm a racist or a white supremacist. What we have here is mob mentality, group think, 99% of the people surrounding me and attacking me probably have no clue who I am. They don't know what I've done. If they knew that I'm attending this anti-police rally, a guy who made a documentary film about the Canadian police state, maybe they would have thought twice about how they treated me. But no, it, it was mob mentality, group think, and it was an unbelievable spectacle to see how fast that can descend into utter madness. And then how we can see the state take the side of the mob and arrest the innocent one who was assaulted. It, it was just mind boggling. It, it is. And you have it documented. I've seen the video. Uh, you didn't do anything wrong. You were not instigating the people uh, there of the mob who were extremely upset just with your presence. And now this may even put an even larger target on your back for future uh, you know, rallies that you may attend as you've been doing, as you said, for over a decade, you didn't, uh, you didn't do nothing wrong, but the mob is going to say, Hey, there's that, you know, white supremacist guy that the cops arrested last time. You know, I mean, I don't know this, that's, that's gotta be pretty concerning for your safety um, in general, as, as you know, we're only halfway through 2020 now. Um, Dan, I, I wanted to ask you if, what is your message, you know, for YouTube? Like if, if you could say something to a YouTube rep or anyone at all from YouTube, like what, what would be your message to them right now? Um, stay true to the roots in the sense of the very word YouTube. Um, I think everybody can clearly see it is now shifting from YouTube to them too. Um, most people are fed up with the television. They're, they understand they're being uh, manipulated by the mainstream media and they're flocking to the internet. They're looking to alternative sources of information and they're coming to your platform, YouTube. You are shooting yourself in the foot 
by controlling the narrative, by giving a skewed opinion of the world, and by silencing the, uh, uh, the ideas, the voices, the opinions that go against your status quo. That's not openness, that's not fair. That is gonna cause your own demise. So I guess my message is, go ahead and continue to shoot yourself in the foot. But uh, you know, I, I, I don't wish to see you uh, 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 banned or, or blocked. I just want you to become obsolete. And I think people are gonna find a better way and they are starting to find a better way. And uh, this may be the beginning of the end for YouTube and really it's your own fault. Well said. And, uh, you know, I would eventually, I would have to agree with this. This is the same thing that we've all been saying and warning of for some time now. And now it's just happening, uh, you know, with an accelerated pace. And I'd really like to thank all the viewers out there who do support and share all these important uh, information and reports that you know, people like Dan Dix from, Pre from Press for Truth puts out and, and the reports that I put out and many others out there doing some great work. And I encourage everyone to make your way out there to these other platforms and start to get familiar with them because I have a feeling we're only going to see more of this um, as, you know, that's just the only way I see it going. I don't see YouTube all of a sudden changing their ways because of, you know, like you said, the, this greater agenda and, and who really owns the Google. I mean, it's Google that's running the show here. So uh, Dan Dix of Press for Truth, top-notch journalist, independent journalist. Thanks so much. Uh, you have any, any last points you'd like to make? Well, I just want people to, uh, uh, to, 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 to join these other platforms, really, really start to check it out. We really need to migrate off of these controlled platforms. Like you said, Google, YouTube, those two pillars, if you will, alone are the gatekeepers of political thought and opinion moving forward. So if you want to expand your, 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 your knowledge outside of that, you have to get onto these other platforms. And um, BitChute, I, I would suggest, Library, I would suggest. Uh, Float, I would suggest. Um, the, the, there, there's a number of really good decentralized, uh, censorship-free, um, uh, you know, in favor of free speech platforms that are coming out all the time. Um, so please check me out at uh, bitshoot.com slash pressfortruth, lbry.tv slash at pressfortruth, and float, F-L-O-T-E dot app slash Dan Dix PFT. And if you want to support my efforts financially, um, you can check out pressfortruth.ca slash donate. Uh, I'm going to need that help moving forward as well, as this is a multifaceted attack, really. Um, it's, it's, it's coming on the financials as well. Uh, so if you would like to support in that way, you can do so at pressfortruth.ca slash donate. There's options for Bitcoin and PayPal and Patreon and things of that nature. But really, the most important thing is subscribe to me on the other channels. Um, start subscribing to all your favorite YouTubers right now on their other channels before it's too late and we're all completely erased from this platform. Dan Dix, Press for Truth, thanks, uh, thanks so much for being here today. And yes, I do, of course, everyone should be supporting independent media because if we don't hang together, we will surely hang separate. I'm Spiro, thanks so much for watching. Stay tuned for more.